Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 294. I am your host, Norman Sanso. Joining me today is Twilight Genesis. G'day. Hey there, man. How you been doing? Uh, not too bad, not too bad. Uh, recovering from a night of drinking, so just a little bit hungover still. Wow. I, I guess that you're pretty hard then. Go home at 10 in the morning without having slept a wink. Ooh. So, yeah, I, I can I can get pretty pretty crazy if I want. Ooh, how do you even do it, my friend? Uh, a lack of sanity helps. And being Australian and Scottish heritage, it, there's a lot of benefits that I have that aren't immediately obvious. Is there a bit of Irishness in there? Because if it is, then yeah, man. I, I don't know, but I also wouldn't be entirely surprised. Alrighty then, alrighty then. So anywho, um, before we go into the show, I think there's this new thing happening in the Down Unders, the Australia if I remember right? Ah, uh, yes. Something that has only recently, very recently, like yesterday, last night, uh, was announced, is a new com- uh, MLP convention happening in South Australia called Alicon. There is, because it's only just being announced, there isn't a lot of information that I have right now, but it is posted around on Facebook and in the Australian Discord servers. So if anyone wants any information, you can just find the event on Facebook under Elicon 2018. But it will be at the Lat- Latvian Hall in South Australia in Adelaide. The proposed dates so far are the 22nd to the 23rd of September. And I'm seeing that right now on the Facebook page. Yes, it's the 22nd and 23rd of September next year. Uh, proposed start time date is 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. and so on. So yeah, this is going to be interesting. I actually have a website, aliconmlp.com. I should probably set this out because it's probably going to sound slightly weird to people because of accents or not. It's Alicon spelt A L I C O N. Yeah, yeah, like Ellie. Um, Ellie, Ellie, Ellie. Like to me, Ellie is kind of a local guy's name. It used to be so common that it's dirt cheap, but not anymore. But um, Alicon. See, they're playing on the puns there. See, Ellie. Corn, get it, get it, get it. <laughs> yeah, I actually said alicorn like the first three times so I said it. Uh, <laughs> uh, but still, good luck to you guys at Alicorn. And hey, um, I'm available for invite if you want to invite me. Maybe I'll put in a, a word with some of the uh, some of the organizers. Unfortunately, I'm not one of the organizers for this one. I'll see what I can do. I, I'm pretty good at worming my way into things. <laughs> Yeah, but still, it's good to know that there's a convention, quote-unquote, local to the Southeast Asian region. And, well, uh, for me, I'll just have to take a plane (laughs) down under. So, still, it's going to be far, but at least it won't be America far. Oh, yeah. Definitely, definitely a lot cheaper than going all the way to America. Kind of. Exchange rate's still going to be hectic for me. But still, that's next year's problem. (laughs) Uh, yeah, that's that's future Norman's issue. Yeah, that's future Norman's issue. I'm right here planning. <laughs> uh, but anywho, let's get right into it. So first up, Twy, you still play the D and Ds? Uh yes, I still play D and D. I've actually one of my groups is will now converted over to playing Numenera, Ooh. which is a different system, but basically the same thing. You, you sit around, pretend to be a character, roll dice, and hope you don't die. <laughs> Ain't that all the indie? Yeah, yeah. Just watch out for falling rocks. That's all I can say. <laughs> uh, Alrighty then. But have you been playing, or are you still playing the Tales of Equestria pony game? I haven't actually had a chance to start it. I was hoping to get a chance to play it at a convention I was at for, for a panel last month. But I never actually got the chance to play it. We we didn't end up cracking it out. So unfortunately, it's, it's something that's still still waiting to happen. All right, then. Too bad. I I have the book too, and I got no idea what to do with it. Like, I I I seriously got no idea how to play this game. But maybe for you guys at home who do have the book and do play it, 
uh, there's a new expansion that comes out. And said expansion is called the Festival of Lights, now available in the US. And said expansion is 60 pages long, with art by Tony Fleece, and also book is worth $16. So get at it, man. Like, it's not bad. If you can't buy it at your local game store, you can also go buy it online at Soda Pop Miniatures, uh, Ninja Division's official store. What can I say, man? Like, I wish I do know how to play this game. Like, I really, really want to. If I had the book so I could read through it, I would probably be able to answer all of your questions. But as it is, I still can't afford to get the book. I've been lagging behind in finances ever since going to Project C Ponycon. Yeah. Which I'm still paying my friend back for. But it was totally worth it. I understand that, man. Like, I'm in the same boat here. But still, um, it is worth it, and the book here is is fun. But you know what? Maybe once we get to know how to play it, we can do something. A, a stream or a recording, you know what, just for the fun of it. Yes, definitely. And I look forward to, pl- to going through the Festival of Lights. Because just looking at the cover of the book, there's a, there's a cave full of pink crystals, which, obviously, I, I, I enjoy pink crystals. And... What looks like giant spiders. I understand that the game isn't based around having a lot of combat, mm-hmm. but being able to, to to buck some spiders in the face, that's going to be fun. <laughs> yeah. And also, uh, I forgot to mention this, but I think this is kind of been in the show a while back ago, but uh, that is their second expansion because their first expansion was... The Curse of the Statuettes. So yeah, we got a lot of content for this book. And not to forget that they also have the Bestiary of Equestria. So that is a good one to get to for you guys who do play the D&Ds. I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on more of this, especially since uh, Wizards of the Coast, which Hasbro owns, so technically Hasbro owns d and Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They haven't produced a lot of extra content for D&D yet, for 5th edition. Really? I would have thought yeah. they did you. Um, they, I think we're, we've only just gotten a, uh, a splat book in the form of uh, Xenophar's Guide to Everything, hmm. which had some more class options and some more race options and things, but as far as I'm concerned, and as a couple of my mates are concerned, we should get one of those books every year and a half at least. And this is the first one we've gotten, really, if you don't count the Sword Coast Guide, because that's mostly a law book. Well, at least if you guys do have an update, that'll be awesome. I personally have got no idea what's even going on, but still, I can understand wanting more content. It's like video games. You want the more DLCs to expand the lifespan of the game. Yeah. Except, you know, d- these books are so much better than DLCs. Uh, a DLC, I'll finish that in like an hour. This, I could play with for days. True that, true that. You'll have awesome great adventures that way. Ah, yes. We certainly shall. Mm-hmm. And talking about awesome great adventures, the My Little Pony movie. That was a movie that happened last few months or well for some it's happening now but still it's a movie you watched it right i saw it twice nice (laughs) i went and saw it the weekend it came out and then the weekend after it came out using the fact that some of my mates couldn't make it the first time (laughs) as an excuse to go see it again (laughs) nice that was an adventure it's an enjoyable movie as much as I wanted to slap Twilight at the end. Yeah. Ah, but still, but still. So, do you have any rental service over there, down under? Like, um, a, what should we call this, Blockbuster or anything like that? Uh, I think there's like maybe one Blockbuster left <laughs> over in my city. It's, every other place has died out. I think Video Easy was the biggest one we had, and there's only like two of those left that I know of, and they're ones that are way, are way 
spread out from the uh, central suburbs. So we, we we have a couple, but not many. Really, really few. Ah, all righty then. But do you guys have Redbox? I've heard of Redbox before, but I don't think we have it down here. At least I've never seen it in Perth. Hmm, probably, I guess. Like, I'm over here locally, we don't have the Redbox or any rental service because... Reasons. Uh, I think Malaysians are quote-unquote cheapskate and they don't want to pay more for content. But that's Malaysians. So, um, talking about the Redbox, it seems that the My Little Pony movie will be out with Redbox on 9th of January. So, that's cool, right? Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Um, I was going to say, that's also fairly soon, considering the movie I just came, but that's Redbox, I'm assuming this is mostly for the USA, and the movie came out a lot earlier for them than it did for the rest of us. Mm -hmm. And the movie came out on October 6th in the States. So, if you count about it, like, November, uh, three months. So it's kind of the right time for the movie to be out on the DVDs, Blu-rays, and also digital. Yeah. Yeah, so at least it will be out. So that's good. And as per usual, if you have a red box subscription, you can go rent it out. There's also other shows that are coming out on January 9th. And the other one that I'm really, really interested in is Scooby-Doo and Batman, the Brave and the Bold. So I would love to see that one too, besides the uh, Pony movie. I would like to watch Scooby-Doo as well. I miss watching Scooby-Doo as a kid. That's a fantastic show. We need we need, a, we need a proper new age Scooby-Doo. I'm pretty sure there is a current series going. I need to see if I can find it and watch it, see if it's any good. I've seen it. The show's called Be Cool Scooby-Doo. And let's just say that a lot of people don't like it, but I do because I gave it the chance and the only reason why I like it, it's the writing's funny. The writing is good. I will have to dig it up and give it a shot then. Yep. And talking about giving it a shot, um, well, it seems that a writer from Gizmodo seems to really enjoy the My Little Pony movie soundtrack. So, yay, that's good. It's great. Everyone should enjoy the soundtrack. It was it was a fun soundtrack. I mean, the songs are a bit, bit just your sort of soulless pop stuff, but it was catchy, enjoyable soulless pop stuff. Hey, there were a few gems in there, like uh, Open Up Your Eyes or something like that. that. That was good. Open Up Your Eyes, I think, could have been a lot better. My favorite song from the movie was uh, probably the song that they had at the start. Um, oh, that one. We Got This? Because yeah, I think yeah. We Got This. And then my other enjoy, most enjoyed songs was the one Pinkie Pie sings with the sea ponies. And I can't remember the name of it. I think it's like... One Small Thing. That's the title of it. Yeah, One Small Thing. That's it. Yeah. Oh, but there's... And at least in the movie, I enjoy Time to Be Awesome. As a standalone track, its outro was way too long and kind of drags. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean by that one. But in all honesty, I do like Time to Be Awesome. Time to Be Awesome was fun. And Open Up Your Eyes was good too. We got this was awesome. But one track they didn't put in the movie was the intro. Ah, uh, yeah, that, um, well, that was a sort of like a parody cover or something or other of an already existing song. So I guess that's why they didn't. But they already paid for it. That's the thing. Then, then again, it's not like they haven't done this before where there's, here's a song in the show and, oh, we're not actually going to put on the OSTs. I'm looking at you, Equestria Girls. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, I am here and salty because uh, when I first saw that, I was thinking like, okay, where's this song? Like, I, I love this song. Where is it? Uh, they're not including it? Why not? And I I was just like, oh, man, this, this, I, I, I got cheated. Ah, uh, well, I guess you'll just have to dig it up somewhere else. Someone will probably leak it somewhere. Yeah, probably. Even if that's even if that's out. Like, I tried to look at it. And yeah, let's just say that uh, buying the official release is much better. Yeah. Oh, back on topic. Uh, the guy uh, who wrote for Gizmodo, uh, long story short, 
he was driving around with his kid going to school and whatnot and played the movie soundtrack for the kid. And when he heard Open Up Your Eyes, he hummed to it. And the kid says, Daddy, do you like this song? And he said, yeah, I do. And yeah, uh, it seems that the song was good enough for the whole family because if I'm not mistaken, if you go read the article, the kid says that, oh, uh, the pony, uh, the bad pony sang song. Uh, you know what? I'm not doing it justice. Go read it at the show notes there and be informed because it is really good. It was a good article too. Yeah, I'm just having a quick quiz for it now. It's a nice article. It's very simple and straight to the point. And it reaffirms that, yes, the movie does have a good soundtrack. Yep. It's comparable to, if I'm not mistaken, this, not Destiny, but what did he compare it to, that video game? Black and uh, Beyond Good and Evil. Yeah, that one. That's what he compared it to. So, yeah, that's good. I will have to listen to the song he compared it to from Beyond Good and Evil. That's included in the article. Yep. Go ahead and listen if you have the chance. And talking about listening to songs, well, how do I put this? Recently, there's a Christmas comic or a Christmas holiday special or My Little Pony Christmas comic that came out. Or as they say here, a holiday special. And in said comic, one of the main thing that's kind of the driving force for the story was this one song called Windy the Windigo. And you know how I feel about songs in comics. If you don't have something to accompany it, like a URL link to the song, it's kind of dead and muted. You have to use your imagination to make the song work. And yeah, I read the comic. It didn't kind of work for me because there's no songs to back it up. Until now, the writer for the comic... James Asmus, he and his friend did the song and it's online for people to listen to. This is quote unquote not official, but this is how he would imagine the song would sound like. So go ahead and take a listen because it is fun. It is really, really fun. It is a catchy song and the singers actually did really good impressions of Flim and Flam. Yep. Because those are the, the ponies that sing the song in the comic. Yep. I listened to it earlier and this song is great. I know, right? And here's the thing. I highly enjoy Flim and Flam. Their singing voice is just too good. It's, they're, they're show, they're show ponies. Like, they're really good at singing. I, I really enjoy that. It makes me smile. And when I hear the sound or when I hear the music for this track, I was giddy. Like, ee! So much fun. Uh, yeah. I I hope we get them singing in season eight. Oh, wow. Like, I okay, first thing first. I do hope that their hotel business keeps going and is successful so they don't have to cheat. But eh, if they do, I, I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, you, you don't want them to descend into being more villainous. But... At the same time, I, I do want them to show up again. I just, I just hope that it's not a really forced or poorly manufactured reason for them to be there. Yeah, like they screw up the business and the hotel's bankrupt now. Like, oh no. Oh, that would suck. I know. They had good hustle going. But still, but still. Talking about returning characters, guess who's back? Is it Twilight? Is it Twilight back? I'm not sure, man. Like, a lot of people didn't like the Twilight. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can see Twilight being cut from the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, yeah. <laughs> no, I can't see it with a straight face. No. Uh, well, <laughs> someone's coming back for season 8, and that someone is Discord. Discord is coming back for the 8th season. So, yay, that's awesome. It's uh, more of a favorite animal jigsaw puzzle. Yep, yep. Dragon Hoof, or whatever it is they call. Yeah, but still, Discord will be coming back for Season 8. And this is tweeted by John Denancy this week. Um, somebody kind of gave him praise, and he just kind of butted in, saying, I'm recording two new episodes this week. 
that you like to know. <laughs> that that's great. It's always always fun to have John Delancey as Discord in the show, True. even though one of the most boring episodes in the show is a Discord episode. Really, it's still no. always nice. What about Discord? The the uh, the the episode that was about Twilight not understanding in joke. Oh, that, that was one. boring as heck. Really, I kind of like that one. I, I I thought it was boring. It wasn't bad. It was just dull. But it's always it's always nice to see Discord come up because you know something wacky and strange is probably going to happen, and someone's going to get trolled. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I'm. Remembering something, also there was a comment on the YouTube that mentioned this article to me, and he says that uh, recently John Delancey uh, tweeted that he'll be recording two new episodes for the show, and he said earlier in what's this, uh, March, he said that he was asked to record two new episodes for season eight, so. Does this mean that there's going to be four Discord episodes or just two? And this is just the recording. Maybe. It would be, be interesting if we got as many as four Discord episodes in one season. Oh yeah, I wish that happened, man. Like, I would love more Discord in season eight. But in all honesty, the way that the first tweet sounds like uh, what John Delancey said is, honestly, I don't keep track of which season I'm in. I was just asked to record two new episodes for season 8, if that's any help. And then, uh, the recent one this week is, I'm recording two new episodes this week. Thought you would like to know. So, that sounds like he's just repeating what he said before in March. And just December, he's just recording it. Maybe. This could be two new episodes for something completely different. Like, he, he they could finally be putting the Discord humanized character, EQ, basically the EQG version of Discord into the EQG stuff. Maybe maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's actually recording for season 9. Yeah. Oh god, no, he, don't you, don't you he, start he that. not specifically say what season it is, so we, we can run wild with what these episodes are. They could be the ones he mentioned before, they could be completely new ones. True, true. And you know what? That makes sense. Like, he is a, <laughs> he is a troll, so... Uh, back in March, he mentioned two new episodes for season eight, and now in December, he says he's just recording two new episodes this weekend. So it could be for the previous post, or it could be something <laughs> for EQG or something else. I don't know. So there's a theory to run by if you're really interested. But you know what? I'm just gonna go say that I hope there's four new episodes, including Discord, because that would be fun. Do we ever get uh four Discords in one season? Not that I can. Think of hmm. outside of premieres and and finales. I think the most appearances he might have had in the season is like two. Two, yeah, yeah, I do remember that. Um, right now I'm trying to go through the wiki and see his appearance listing, but trying to find that in a recording takes time and makes. Okay, there we go. Not that bad. All right. Uh, in season 7, he was in two talking episodes and three background and a mention. So technically, he had two speaking lines. In season 6, he had three talking uh, episodes. So that's good. Nice. That, that's always good. So the possibility of having four episodes? That's cool. That that would be fun to say. I, I always say we, we need more Discord. Yep, yep. And who knows, right? Uh, maybe we'll get to see Discord in something. Like, I, I don't know. Uh, but anywho, with that, that's the news for this week. So, nothing much to do besides going to my favorite topic, which is what have you been doing with our week? So, Twai, what have you been doing with your week, man? I've, let's see what I can remember from after last night's sh- uh, shenanigans. Played a bit of Warframe. Played a bit of The Lost and the Damned, and watched a bunch of movies while drinking last night. I, that's that's about it. I haven't been up to a terrible amount this week. Yeah. Uh, alrighty then. Oh, by the way, I heard Warframe has gotten this update where everything is kind of free roam. This came out a while ago, at least on PC. 
they got the Planes of Eidolon update, which in- gave us a large, I think it was like a three by three kilometer space that you can uh, enter and run around in and do things like bounties. You can fish, you can uh, mine for rock. The fishing's fun. Sounds fun. Yeah, it's it's quite a, a change of pace from its usual. You go into a, a procedurally generated uh, mission that has it takes a bunch of rooms from uh, a collection within a certain tile set and just makes you a random level every time. This place is always the same no matter what, so it's it's refreshing. That sounds interesting and sounds fun. Like I mean. I tried Warframe a bit, and I don't think it's my cup of tea. But still, um, for people who do keep playing it, I guess you guys have a lot of fun then. Uh, yeah, uh, most of the time we have a lot of fun. And then other times, it's just don't want to deal with some of the things in the game. Uh, some of the enemies, uh, I hate they cheat. them. hate them so much. Well, they're just a pain in the ass to, to deal with. <laughs> they're just a, pa- a pain to deal with. Enemies that have invulnerability uh, stages and enemies that will always knock you over if you get close to them. Enemies that have very well-guarded weak spots and you basically can't hurt them if you don't hit them there. Oh, hey, wow. Those are always just aggravating to deal with. <laughs> Sounds like a gale time. Oh, yeah. It's, it's fantastic. Absolutely great. But we can still play Fashion Frame, which is great. We can still color <laughs> everything out the wazoo. Uh, everything shiny, pretty. Or you just do what I do, and everything is now pink and black. <laughs> Why does this remind me of Fashion Souls or Hunter... Um, Wait, Fashion Souls, yes, that's one. Or Monster Fashion or Fashion Hunter. Why does this remind me of that? Uh, the same, same premise, but... Fashion Frame does it the best. <laughs> uh, I'm going to believe you, man. I'm going to believe you. Besides that, what else, man? Not much. I, well, I had been playing Fortnite, but recently my mate who I play with hasn't been online when I'm online to play, and I don't bother to, to bump him to drag him online, so I haven't played that a lot. Uh, all right, you don't. I did see the new game no uh no game no life movie Ooh. three times. Oh wow, okay. How was that? Good enough for me to see it three times. <laughs> uh, so you're a big fan then? Oh yeah, I I love no game no life. It's I think it's it's trashy as it is it is a great show. <laughs> By the way, uh, is it dubbed in English or Japanese? Both actually. The first time I watched it, we saw the English version, and then the next two times I watched the Japanese version with English subtitles. Ah, oh, okay, that's interesting. The dub was actually surprisingly good and fairly accurate to the dialogue given in the subtitles. That's always good. And the music is stunning. All right, then. All right, then. So that's a recommend from you, then. Oh, definitely. <laughs> all right, then. Anyway, as for me, well, my week has been pretty simple. Um, didn't do nothing much besides the payday on Overwatch. And by the way, Twy, we need to play some payday. I need to get the achievement for um the whole crew wearing a specific mask. Ah, uh, yeah, there's a couple of those. Yeah. But yes, we need to play more payday. I I was told that they had an update with a new heist recently. Oh, the, added. the heist reservoir dogs. That was fun. I've played the heist and oh my god, that is so much fun. You start out in day two. You start out in day two. Yep. That, that is very different. <laughs> I know. Uh, and it's I, like, I would have to update my game and play it then. Yeah, do invite me, man. Like, I, I do have a build, like, I just want to play it with people and it's fun. And like, seriously, it's fun. Uh, it's a new take on an old game. So yay. Besides that, there's always the Overwatch, and since Overwatch has its Christmas special, um, it's fun too. And what else? Yeah, I Oh, uh, yeah, the new game mode. I tried that in Overwatch. I did not like it. Oh, wait. Do you have Overwatch? My friend bought me Overwatch while, a while back. I just haven't been playing it. 
Yeah, I noticed you online. Sorry, Norman. I, I, I could have been playing Overwatch with you this whole time, but I was too lazy. I noticed that, like, I noticed, like, okay, suddenly I was playing, and then, like, I saw the thing on the Battle.net saying, uh, that Twilight Genesis has just stopped playing Overwatch. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, that, that, that happens. Uh, I tried out the new game mode mm. and got wrecked. Uh, the Yeti or the Snowball? The, the Yeti. Oh. Really no. I, I I hate I hate the Yeti game mode. I've only won, I played like six games and I only won once because the Yeti accidentally jumped off the edge of the map. Oh wow! You know what? It's all, in all honesty, the Yeti gameplay was interesting, but let's just say that it will be fun for the first ten minutes. That's about it. Then it gets kind of repetitive and and dull, especially if it if it's like how I expect it to be, where the Yeti wins almost all the time. Um, in my game, no man. Like you have to play smart because you need to. You and your gang need to kind of freeze the Yeti, and we need to drain his life till zero. But you know what? This is just my point of view. I played from the hunter, and I played from the Yeti, and with the Yeti, you need to play smart. In fact, you need to play smart overall. Uh. I'll have to try playing as the Yeti. Oh, the Yeti is fun. The Yeti is fun. The main goal for it is to eliminate five of the hunters. But eh, it's fun. But we need to play, man. We need to really, really play. Like you and me in a group. Let's just play. Yes, we we shall. And we'll drag Will in when we can as well. Oh, uh, man. Will's too high, man. Will's too high. His, uh, his level is way top. He'll, just, he'll he'll whoop us. Okay, so we drag him in so he plays with us, not against us, and then he can whoop the enemy, and we'll just that we'll is... sit back and we've done something. That's a good idea, but if things get salty, oh no! But then that's that's plans for the future. What else have you been up to this this week, Norman? Mm. Ah, yes, I've seen the Star Wars movie. It was fun. I've been meaning to to say, see that. I mean, it only came out on Thursday, but. I just want to get it over and done with. Probably next week on the movie day. When do you have your movie day? On a Wednesday? Well, I, I go to a movie whenever I want. I have cards that get me cheap tickets, regardless of what day it is. I just I just need to get paid. <laughs> yeah, still, I do understand that. And from Rotten Tomatoes, I saw the movie got a 95% from reviewers, and a lot of fans panned it. Like, they give it a 50 like it's hanging around the fifty to fifty one rating, so it's like, what's going on? The only complaint I've I, I recall reading about it so far was my one friend who said it goes on for too long, and that that was his only complaint was that it's too long. I guess. And I I reckon if, if the only problem with it is that it's too long, I'll sit through it fine. I've had to sit through boring things. So if this is at least mildly amusing, I won't have any issues. Alrighty then, alrighty then. Oh, also another movie I want to watch this year is Jumanji. Yes, Jumanji and Coco both come out on Boxing Day here, and I'm seeing them both on that day. I'm back to back. I, nothing's going to stop me, even if I have to rob the place. <laughs> no, don't <laughs> so do I can that. Pay for my own ticket. Oh, well, don't do that. But yes, Coco is amazing. I've seen it, and it is just good i mean whenever you see the movie remember me i guess i'll remember you <laughs> you'll get that when you watch the movie <laughs> uh, but <Okay>. still, <laughs> that's something to keep in mind for the movie yes and uh for jumanji that looks awesome like it's one of those movies where it's full of cheese but you know you're gonna enjoy it because they, dwayne the rock johnson and kevin hart's there ah uh, yeah this I'm I'm just going to look into it because it's The Rock, and that, that's it. I saw The Rock, and I'm like, I have to see this movie. If, even if it's horrible, <laughs> I'm seeing this movie. But The Rock has been in good movies lately, so the chances of that movie being bad is kind of slim. Yeah, yeah. The, the Rock has been doing pretty well with movies lately, which is always, always good to know. Mm -hmm. And he does work well with Kevin Hart. I forget what it was, but they had a movie that was last year that they were both in. I think it was called Nash, uh, Secret Service or National Service or something like that. I I forget, but it's the one where The Rock is like the CIA agent, and then he Kevin Hart is just the uh, the 
accountant and he ropes him into the crazy adventure. That was a great movie. I seen that one and it was fun. It was <laughs> it was kind of crazy dumb. Let me see, let's see. Uh what was that movie called? Ah, here it is. Central Intelligence. That's the one. That's a great movie. And if you haven't seen it yet, listeners, do yourself a favor and go find it because it is brilliant. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. It's just best friends playing around. <laughs> ah, but still, but still. Well, with that, folks, we've reached the end, and we've kind of... I'm surprised that we almost got into an hour. It's just us having fun. <laughs> but anywho, if you guys at home have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. You can also reach the show's Twitter account, at show. And as for me, you can catch me at Norman Sanzo. Twi, where can the good people find you, man? They can find me on Twitter under midnight underscore pint. You can find me on DeviantArt and Thin Fiction as Twilight Genesis. You can find me on YouTube and Facebook as Double Pint Productions. Ah, nice, nice. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube and Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on ponyvalive.com. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com and coffee.com. With every support, you'll get early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I like to thank Lurker, Cat, Memjagatorius, Starstream, Master of Lag, Amy, and also Mark. Thank you guys for the awesome support. You've been really awesome. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I've been Twilight Genesis. And we'll guys catch you next week for another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Catch ya.